the G1 worst ever. I remember a time when I had an NES and I started playing Super Mario World and it was beautiful and there were things and it was awesome. And then Yoshi's Island came out and it was also amazing. It'd be Yoshi, it to run around, there was a little big Mario, it was crazy. And then Yoshi's story tried to pick it up and it wasn't quite as good, but it was it, it satisfied my Yoshi needs. And then there was a period of time where there was like a nothing Yoshi coming out, right? And then they announced Yoshi's new island! And I was so excited. It was gonna happen. It was gonna happen for me. And then I realized that its name was actually Yoshi's New Island. That was the actual title. And it was produced by a company called Arzest. And their lovely repertoire is uh, Wii Motion Play and um, the Mean Street Plaza. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's their notable titles. The music is the first thing that assaults you about this game. Uh, it's like if you took uh, 50 people and you all handed them really cheap party kazoos and you're like, blow as hard as you could blow, and they blew and they kazooed, and that's the entire soundtrack. It's everything with kazoos, it's kazoo and banjos, it's just kazoos forever. And every time you hear it, I just have to turn the volume down. I'm like, oh god, there's too many kazoos! There's something awesome about fighting Baby Bowser. He's in the distance and you hear that music, and he like rises out of the darkness and you're like, oh, here he comes! And like, and this game had nothing. It was, it was not even com comparable. And then you beat Baby Bowser and you're like, okay, thank god I'm done with this dang game. And then Bowser, adult Bowser, just jumps through time and he's like, I lied! You have to go get three stars and everything to beat me again. And you're not a real player if you don't beat me. And I was like, what? How did Bowser get time travel? How is this a thing? And then you beat Bowser and it's no big deal. And you're like, really? I still have a hundred lives. Or was the challenge? Or the secrets? Where is my transforming into stuff for stuff other than lives? I like to transform into a helicopter to get to the end of the stage, not to just get a few lives and go, yay, that was worthless. Yoshi's New Island, you're the worst reboot ever. I hope you're satisfied. For me, the worst reboot has to be Castlevania Lords of Shadows. The whole, all three games in that series are really growing my gears. And the reason why is because they're really boring. They're so by the numbers, it's everything that a next generation game at the time should not have been, in my opinion. They're just really pretty to look at, but you can't explore the environments very much. And they're so by the numbers, they're so Assassin's Creed and Prince of Persia. You can just see it ripped straight out of these games. So you, your character is just this big Mary Sue who's untouchable basically. And yeah, you might be scaling mountains and walls and all this other stuff but it doesn't require any input from you it's so easy that's really sad when you think of where the series came from in the NES but it was really difficult at least the first couple of times you tried to play it and it basically had its roots in horror you know as a big homage to hammer horror and everything there's nothing left of that in Lords of Shadows on top of that you know you go from a gameplay perspective, it's just based on God of War engine, and where previous installments are based on, I don't know, like Metroid or Devil May Cry, or that sort of thing. I think this one's executed the most poorly because it takes everything that's fun about God of War out of the equation. The orchestral score really bothers me because Castlevania has some of the most iconic and my favourite music in the whole franchise to the point where, you know, I was inspired to be a video game composer by this franchise, by the original composer of the themes in you know, Simon's Quest, Castlevania, and Draco's Curse, Symphony of the Night, etc. This score is just so forgettable, so bland, so Hollywood, so John Williams, so done. Many, many times the fight will have finished and the music will still be bombarding me with loud aggressive, almost claustrophobic orchestral score that's just doing my head in basically. I literally have to turn the volume down and I'll be stuck in a stupid um, puzzle sort of maze thing or whatever. It'll still be going, just hammering on my head. The worst ever reboot slash remake is TMNT Turtles in Time reshelled on XBLA. What made Turtles in Time so great? It wasn't the graphics, it wasn't the music, it wasn't the gameplay, 
It was the fact that the game came together and became something that was better than each of those individual things combined. It was a great game to play with your friends, it was smooth, it was fluid, it had all those things, and they all supported one another. It made the game a better piece overall. It made it the best comic book slash TV show adaptation game out there, in my opinion. Turtles in Time Reshelled took all that and just shit all over it. It just made the game so absolutely bad. There was no color except for on the pirate stage. There was generic music instead of great TMNT music that we remember from back in the day. There was very little gameplay. They took the element of control away from you as the player. They only made a remake of it to make money, and that's why the game is not as good as the original. That's why the game is the worst ever remake slash reboot. The developers of Reshell took everything that made Turtles in Time great and ignored it. That's why the game is the worst ever reboot slash remake. It has no soul. All right, G1 Nation, here is the undisputed worst ever franchise reboot. And when you think about franchise reboots that got the shaft, you gotta think about franchises that had a long, storied history of rich lore and, and games that spanned on forever. And if you're thinking about Wing Commander and what happened with Wing Commander Arena, you would be wrong as hell, because it actually belongs to the 2007 Shadowrun reboot. Now you're probably thinking, whoa, Shadowrun? Tom, what the hell is Shadowrun? Well, it's a cyberpunk future game set in the not too distant future, but not in the present either, where magic has returned to the world and high fantasy creatures like elves, dwarves, and orcs, and monsters and bears and tigers, oh my, they all start showing up and they are trying to either preserve the magic or uh, obtain it for nefarious deeds through a large corporation called RNA. So. When this got announced, it had been a long ass time since there'd ever been a Shadowrun game. The last two being the ones on the Genesis and the uh, Sega CD, or the Mega Drive for you friends across the pond, and one for the Super Nintendo. And then nothing <laughs> for a very long time until words that there was going to be a new Shadowrun game by FAFSA Studio. I'm like, oh my god, this is gonna be great. Did you see what they did with Crimson Skies? High Road to Revenge based off the original Crimson Skies game on PC? This is gonna be great, because Crimson Skies was a board game and a tabletop RPG as well. I couldn't wait. I was thinking like, it's gonna be like Deus Ex. We're gonna get a Shadowrun game that plays like Deus Ex. This is gonna be awesome. And then it ended up being a multiplayer online only team deathmatch thing and it really hurt my soul and the worst part is the gameplay's actually good it's the fact that they made it a shadow run game is what hurts me so freaking bad now here's the reason why it's a huge kick in the pants that this multiplayer is actually good but it's based on shadow run you have all the trademark things short of hacking uh, in this uh, multiplayer game, uh, you have the uh, you have your a uh, trademark glider. You have uh, weapons that have accuracy based on rate of fire. You have the uh, the ability to see through walls. You have the ability to do short range teleports or blinking if you prefer. All of this stuff is here, and there's no single player campaign to go along with it. Think about it, if you will. If you played the Syndicate that came out in 2011, or if you're, uh, or if you played Deus Ex: Human Revolution, imagine that, but with like elves and dwarves and hacking into computers and stopping um, espionage, corporate espionage, and things of that nature. That's what this could have been. This is. <laughs> Now, if you're thinking I'm being a little bit too harsh on it, think about how much flack Titanfall got when it came out and had an online-only single-player campaign with a huge emphasis on multiplayer. Shadowrun did it eight years earlier. And imagine this big sticker on it about the size of a silver dollar saying, online only. Is there any reason why FASA Studio got shut down shortly after this game got released? At the end of the day, it wasn't all bad. It was actually one of the few games that actually supported cross-network play between Games for Windows Live and players on Xbox 360. That's right, there was even achievements for that. Friends who played together across those two platforms. And, man, um, so much could have been done, but it would be years before we would actually get a proper Shadowrun game. And it actually went more back to the roots of being isometric and had a very successful Kickstarter, but... You know, in the short term, at least we got a new machinima from Rooster Teeth called 1-800-MAGIC. I am the magic. I am the magic? 
What the fuck was that? You smell bacon? What just happened to Bitterman? Why does it smell like bacon? And apparently, magic smells like bacon in Shadowrun. Hmm. Oh, god damn it. There's that bacon smell again.